right now, as you're watching this, your body is being bathed in energy that began its journey 4.6 billion years ago. Every photon of sunlight hitting your skin started as a nuclear reaction in the core of our sun. But here's what's truly mind-blowing. That sun, our life-giving star, almost never existed at all. Today we're going to unravel one of the most consequential events that ever occurred, the birth of our sun. Now, I want you to pause for a moment and consider something profound. Look at your hand. The calcium that gives structure to your bones was forged in the nuclear furnace of a dying star. The iron flowing through your bloodstream, right now, was created during a supernova explosion that happened billions of years ago. Even the oxygen you're breathing was manufactured inside a massive star that lived, evolved, and died long before a solar system even existed. This raises a fascinating question that we're going to explore today. How did all of these stellar ingredients come together at exactly the right time and place to create not just our sun, but a solar system capable of supporting life? The story of our sun's birth is really the story of how the universe spent nearly 10 billion years preparing the perfect recipe for worlds like Earth, and for creatures like us who can look back and understand our own cosmic origins. Picture the universe 4.6 billion years ago. It's already ancient by cosmic standards, about 9 billion years old, roughly two-thirds of its current age. But here's what's fascinating. Things look surprisingly familiar. The Milky Way was already there, looking much like it does today. Hundreds of billions of stars were already shining, casting their light across the galaxy's spiral arms. Small dwarf galaxies were being slowly consumed by larger ones. Cosmic cannibalism happening on scales we can barely comprehend. And scattered throughout those majestic spiral arms were stellar nurseries, regions where new stars were constantly being born. Imagine dozens, maybe hundreds of these cosmic maternity wards active at any given moment across our galaxy. But here's the thing that blows my mind. Our sun couldn't have formed much earlier than it did. Why? Because the universe needed time to cook up the right ingredients. When the universe began, it was almost entirely hydrogen and helium, about 75% to 25% respectively. Everything else, less than a millionth of a percent, that's it. No carbon, no oxygen, no silicon, no iron. Nothing that could make rocky planets, or well us. It took generations of massive stars living fast, burning bright, and dying spectacularly in supernovae to scatter heavier elements throughout the galaxy. These stellar explosions were like cosmic factories, forging the elements we needed and spreading them through space. By the time our solar system formed, we had reached a critical threshold, about 2% heavy elements. That might not sound like much, but it was enough. Enough to make rocky planets. Enough to make life possible. Now, let's zoom in on one particular region of space, about 27,000 light years from the galactic center, roughly halfway to the edge of the Milky Way's disk. Here, a massive cloud of gas and dust, thousands of times more massive than our sun, begins to collapse. What triggers this collapse? Think of it like a cosmic traffic jam. As this cloud passes through one of the Milky Way's spiral arms, it gets compressed by density waves. Imagine squeezing a sponge. The cloud bunches up, getting denser and denser until gravity takes over. But here's where it gets really interesting. This cloud doesn't just collapse into one giant star. Instead, it breaks apart into hundreds, maybe thousands of smaller clumps like a cosmic egg carton, each section destined to become its own star. The biggest clumps grow the fastest, becoming massive, brilliant blue giants. These stellar behemoths are the celebrities of the star-forming region, bright, hot, and absolutely gorgeous. But they're also doomed. You see, there's a cosmic race happening here. Gravity is trying to pull matter into these growing protostars while radiation from the biggest, brightest stars is trying to blow all that material away. It's a tug of war between creation and destruction. The massive stars are in the early rounds. They're tens, even hundreds of times more massive than our sun, shining thousands to millions of times brighter. They're the universe's rock stars, 
brilliant, attention-grabbing, and destined to burn out fast. But here's the cosmic irony. These stellar giants are living on borrowed time. A star twice as massive as our sun burns through its fuel eight times faster. A star ten times more massive. It lives less than 1% as long. While our sun will shine for 10 to 12 billion years, these massive stars flame out in just a few million years. Cosmic mayflies. Meanwhile, in the quieter corners of this stellar nursery, smaller clumps are slowly, patiently growing. One of these modest clumps is accumulating matter at just the right rate, in just the right place. This clump will become our sun. Here's something that might surprise you. Our sun is actually pretty impressive by cosmic standards. It's more massive than 95% of all stars in the universe. Most stars, about 75 to 80%, are red dwarfs, tiny, cool stars with less than 40% of our sun's mass. But our sun had another crucial advantage. It was alone. No stellar companion, no binary partner. Why does this matter? We now know that rocky planets in the habitable zone, where liquid water can exist, are almost impossible in multi-star systems. The gravitational chaos makes stable, life-friendly orbits nearly impossible. As our proto-sun continued growing, something magical was happening. The material falling into it was heating up from gravitational compression. Slowly, steadily, the core temperature climbed higher and higher. And then, for 0.56 billion years ago, it happened. The temperature in our sun's core reached 4 million Kelvin, hot enough for nuclear fusion to begin. Hydrogen atoms started fusing into helium, releasing tremendous amounts of energy our star was officially born. This ignition triggered a cascade of dramatic events. Powerful stellar winds began blowing outward from our newborn Sunday. The surrounding disk of material, what would become our solar system, started getting sculpted by this radiation. Volatile materials like water began to freeze at different distances, creating invisible frost lines that would determine where rocky planets could form close in and where icy gas giants could develop farther out. Within just 500,000 to 2 million years, the first clumps in this disk began forming, the seeds of what would become planets. The violent, chaotic birth of our sun was setting the stage for something even more remarkable, a planetary system where life could eventually emerge. Our sun likely formed alongside thousands of other stars in a massive stellar cluster. But here's something bittersweet. Most star clusters don't stay together. Within a billion years, nearly all of them break apart, scattering their stellar children across the galaxy. This means our sun has thousands of siblings out there, stars born from the same cosmic cloud, forged in the same stellar nursery. They're now scattered across the Milky Way, each carrying the same cosmic DNA, the same age, the same mixture of elements. Astronomers sometimes wonder, when we find a star with the same age and elemental composition as our sun, could this be one of our long-lost siblings? It's a beautiful thought that somewhere out there are stellar brothers and sisters that share our cosmic heritage. So the next time you step outside and feel the warmth of sunlight on your face, remember this incredible story. You're feeling the energy from nuclear reactions that began 4.56 billion years ago in a stellar nursery that no longer exists, from a process that required the entire universe to evolve just right. Our sun's birth wasn't just the beginning of our solar system. It was the moment when the possibility of life, of consciousness, of you being here to contemplate your own cosmic origins became real. The universe is vast and often indifferent, but in at least one small corner of it, a perfectly ordinary star began shining at exactly the right time, in exactly the right place, with exactly the right conditions to eventually give rise to a species that could look back and understand its own incredible cosmic story. And that, to me, is absolutely extraordinary. What do you think is the most amazing part of our sun's birth story? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this cosmic journey, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. We've got so many more incredible stories from the universe waiting to be told. Thanks for watching, and remember, you're made of star stuff, 
and that makes you pretty special. 